Good day, everyone. I'm really excited that uh, we meet physically here after a long time. And uh, about uh, this thrilling topic, we are going to speak about distress and IRO management. And uh, I'm Honor, also Honor, about uh, the composition of our panel, because we have all the experts of the real estate sector. Uh, we have, have a service here, real estate consultant, and so on. Uh, I'm Panagiotis Merekoulias. I'm managing partner of uh, Values. It's a company in, uh, with uh, a member of FIVA, and uh, we do valuation of uh, real estate assets, also construction and uh, project management. Our base is in Athens, and uh, I will, will uh, ask kindly uh, the rest of the panel to present themselves, and uh, we begin with uh, Ms. Pateraki. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Mila Pateraki. I'm the Chief uh, Real Estate uh, Services Officer for Duvalu. Uh, responsible for all the assets, whether those are collaterals on loans or they are repossessed uh, through special ve vehicles uh, by the investors on the portfolios we're managing. <coughs> uh, hi, good, uh, good evening to, to everyone. I'm George Litsas. I'm the managing director of GLP, a group of companies representing GB worldwide in Greece and Cyprus. Um, relating to real estate consultancy and uh, generally asset management. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dimitris Andritsos. I'm uh, the CEO of uh, Chevrolet Property Services, a company that provides an holistic approach to real estate management. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Hello. Uh, I'm Christophoros Stratos. I'm running the Resolute Asset Management business here in Greece. Uh, we've been around for since 2014 and the uh, start of all this mess, and we see that we're going to be around for a while. <laughs> Hello, I'm Yanis Parsivopoulos. I'm general manager of Danos, Ben Paribas Real Estate. We're a real estate consulting firm with uh, presence in three countries. I'm glad to be here again, meet in person everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll have a very nice panel here. And Dimitris? Hello. It's my pleasure being with uh, you. I thank uh, a lot TDC for inviting me. I, I'm Dimitris Papakristo. I'm the CEO of uh, Build Up Real Estate Development and Investment. Our company is counting now five decades. We are, except of our specialization in real estate uh, investment uh, and development, we are specialized in technical and owners due diligence of assets and also at uh, the closing uh, of uh, contracts uh, at the final acquisition stage. Okay, let's kick start our discussion with getting a feeling of general uh, analysis of real estate sector after COVID area. Uh, so, Yanni, uh, based on your uh, expertise and your experience, can you tell us uh, what you think and uh, at what stage of uh, the recovery of, uh, is the uh, real estate uh, market in Greece? We have heard a word uh, also in the, first, in the previous panels, resilience. The estate market was resilient in the past years through the pandemic. We came out of a big crisis. We have seen uh, recovery signs uh, during 2018 and 2019. Okay, pandemic uh, has affected uh, partially the real estate market, but uh, we have to discuss not uh, in a homogeneous way about the real estate market. We have to diversify between uh, asset classes. We have to diversify between uh, sub-markets in each asset class. So uh, there is, uh, there is a, a big uh, demand for products like greater offices, like uh, greater logistics. Uh, uh, there is also, of course, a gap between primary and secondary assets. This is uh, the big issue in the Greek real estate market. But what we are seeing also is a lack of product in the, in the market, and uh, this uh, leads to, to new developments. So in a few words, in the new area of real estate in Greece, Three parameters will play a role. It will be flexibility, quality, and TSG. Okay. Lila, what would yeah, you think about I, that? I, I was going to add to that, but in Greece, we were lucky, I, I guess, or unlucky, whatever you want to put it, but in terms of today's position, we're lucky because in, in the rest of Europe, post-2008, during the crisis, the recovery started towards the end of 2014, 2015, mid 2015, depending on which location in Europe you were. Uh, first West, next, uh, then uh, East, Central East. 
In Greece, we, it, the recovery started pretty much in mid-2018, which means that we had a lag in terms of catching up peak value. So whether, whether while in other countries in, in Europe we see that the peak prices that have been uh, observed uh, in this cycle were higher than the peak prices that were observed uh, back in 2008, uh, in Greece we're still lacking uh, that uh, um, reaching that level. We have started seeing it in specific segments, residential in, uh, in the south, uh, close to the sea. I mean, we've started seeing it in some segments, but we haven't seen it across the market. So I think that uh, further amplifies what uh, Yanni said, that uh, there is stability. We haven't seen an issue with a COVID or with a war. Um, however, it depends how long, in my view, it depends also how long the high construction cost prices will last, uh, because we've started seeing situations where the replacement value is a lot higher than the actual acquisition value, especially for older uh, properties, which of course is a plus for older properties, uh, but it doesn't help the market advance a little bit. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a tricky... I guess, a uh, situation where we are and, and we have to, to watch to see how that will evolve. Mm -hmm. Dimitri, uh, will you elaborate uh, on that? Uh, it's certain that, uh, as Lila again said, that we are well behind of the recovery compared to, to European countries. We just have recovered one third of, let's say, the degrees uh, of the market. So there is a room. There is a, a wide and different mix of um, investors or buyers um, uh, in its uh, category, uh, especially in the residential, uh, where we have seen uh, new people to come, new, um, let's say, trends in the, all these uh, properties. According to our models, what uh, we can see is that, uh, yes, the, the, the price levels, we believe that we continue to go uh, up or not to the same pace like uh, this year, uh, like previous years, um, but at the same time, uh, we believe that uh, the volumes will be uh, less than uh, 21 or 20. So um, maybe this is the, what is the real estate expression of stagflation that we discuss. But uh, there is a demand. Mm -hmm. There is a, um, quite a diversified pool of investors. Mm -hmm. We are well behind. We have um, even from the government, uh, new, let's say, uh, um, incentives in the real estate. So I believe that if we handle correctly the situation, we can manage all these crises, the financial, the pandemic, and now the geopolitical crisis. So I believe that we can do a lot of things on that. Mm -hmm. Christophoros, what do uh, you believe? Well, um, we definitely see liquidity, um, both in the granular residential um, various types of investors. We see some other areas which are uh, more difficult assets, which are still not liquid. Um, there is a mix of everything. I think the trend is uh, subject to whatever disruptions we will see um, with the the outcomes, um, the impact of the, the Ukraine invasion, uh, they may be long lasting and they mm -hmm. uh, could, uh, they could be a damper on the overall evolution of the market. On the other hand, uh, less construction means uh, a growing need for secondhand properties. So mm -hmm. the one would balance out the other. The key is for the Greek economy to grow so that um, it can absorb the thousands, tens of thousands of uh, properties that will be coming up for sale. Uh, it's not just international investors that can come in, but we need to, to keep on growing the employment, the Greek economy, the GDP, in order for people to be able to invest in properties. Mm -hmm. Dimitri, uh, is there anything you would... Like yes, uh, I, I would like to ask that uh, to add that uh, we are living in the tricky days, and uh, this is uh, uh, driving uh, everybody, and especially investors and individuals, to real investments. 
Real investments is real estate. It's a secure investment that we know ages now that is something stable. And uh, in Greece, we have two types. We have the institutional investors that we all know, but we have a huge number of small, medium, private and uh, individual investors. According to the data of the tax authorities, 7.2 million uh, people in Greece are owning real estate. So we see it's a sector that everybody is in and is involved and they won't exit because it's a stable uh, sector. Mm -hmm. George? Um, I more or less agree with what has been said, but um, I'm very cautious of the fact that we see yields are coming down. We see inflation is coming up. Uh, we have announcements from European Central Bank that the interest rates, Euribor, will come up. For me, as a financier, um, it starts um, ringing some bells which might be unpleasant in the near future. Definitely there's a, there is an interest. Of course, we're in a real estate conference and we must underline the interest uh, in the secondary markets and uh, in, in all the markets and I would definitely agree with that. Uh, but um, uh, personally, I'm a bit of skeptical uh, what uh, is going to happen. Um, agreeing with Dimitris, yes, might the properties uh, will definitely will, will have um, uh, uh, the place to move up. Uh, the indicator says something like that. Our research department says exactly the same. Uh, but uh, we have all these uh, monkey pox viruses coming in. We have um, um, uh, war in Ukraine. Um, yes, what do you think about the... the well, new generally, I think in, in a bigger the picture, um, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a bit of skeptical. It's not all the data in our hands yet. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the second semester what's going to happen. Uh, there is some, some bad signs of, of uh, the U.S. market, uh, uh, might go in inflation, they're expecting some numbers to come in out uh, next week. So uh, personally, uh, I, I keep all this um, um, uh, good feeling of the market, but uh, one person is not enough. We need some uh, billions of them to be uh, on, the, on the positive side for the market to continue moving. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's keep uh, fingers crossed. Yes. What do you think about the, the new pandemic and the world and uh, in okay, now Okay, the real in estate uh, has a time lag in the reaction in such kind of uh, indicates. Uh, we don't know yet what will be the, the impact of uh, the world. We don't know yet how long the world will last also. Okay. For me, I agree most, most with, uh, with George. The, the big issue will be the inflation. The inflation uh, will uh, perhaps drive to to lead to higher interest rates, and uh, this could be probably a problem for Greece. Not m so much, though, for the prime markets who have uh, already a, a yield compression, because uh, the difference between the yields in Greece and Europe remains high. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, last, I want to add only that uh, we are seeing in Greece also interest for, uh, let's say, the so-called niche market. Okay. We are discussing now projects for uh, serviced apartments. We are now projects for uh, senior living or student housing. These are uh, uh, new components in the real estate market, newcomers that are looking for specialized products. I understand that uh, the majority of uh, our audience is uh, in the NPL business and is looking to other asset classes more intensively. But uh, in this specific conversion projects, there will be a future, in the, especially in the major uh, capital cities of uh, capital city of Athens or Thessaloniki and other big cities in Greece. Lila, what uh, uh, your opinion about the war and the inflation? You have... I'll go back to what I said. We have a plus: values that have not reached the peak. Uh, we have a negative: inflation, high prices. Um, and Yanis is right. Everything agree. Uh, everything delays in the real estate about six months. But the concern also is the fact that if, if we're talking, if we're thinking in cycles, it means that the real estate cycle that has started about um, going up about eight years ago in Europe um, is reaching its peak. I don't know where we are. Uh, usually if, if we knew that the answer to that, we will all be making a lot of money. But um, definitely we were on the upward part and it's the question whether we have reached the peak or we are just you know close to the peak and of course 
Uh, Greece is also lagging, and we saw that in 2008 on when um, you know the the effect of a crisis in in the world is hitting the country. Uh, but of course, it will be affected since the majority of the investments we have in real estate also is is uh, foreign. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, optimistic with a pint of uh, conservatism, I would say. So let's not get overexcited because that's the situation we had back in 2008 and we saw the results of that. Mm -hmm. Dimitris, what do you your opinion about that? Okay, more or less is close to what we discussed before. Uh, of course, we have an environment, in, in the national environment, which is uh, quite interesting, quite tricky. Um, the real estate is not that it has only lag, but at the same time, uh, is, let's say, um, uh, a hedged inflation, for instance. We want to invest something that is real, we want to invest something that finally, after a while, we will have uh, some capital gains and all that, and to be close to an investment that we can see, we can touch, and we can feel. So I believe that uh, it is um, uh, not by accident that people want to go to, uh, to real estate in, uh, area, in uh, periods that the things are not uh, so calm and easy. At the same time, uh, as I said, uh, for me, the first part is that we, the market is going to be a bit, uh, not frozen, but uh, the volumes, as I said before, uh, will be um, uh, less than before. Uh, wait and see a bit, but at the same time, people is looking to, to see what he's going to do with his money. Just to understand that we have negative uh, uh, interest rates in deposits, so if we see as an investment uh, tool uh, the real estate, mm -hmm. investment product, uh, you have the alternatives, what? So, for me, uh, it is a very interesting period. It, it requires, of course, very uh, good um, monitoring knowledge of the dynamics, and this is the interesting part and the challenging part for asset managers to provide correct guidelines for decision making. Generally, it will be, uh, I believe that the positive part has more chances than the, uh, the negative, especially for Greece. And as Gianni said, don't refer to generally to the, uh, the real estate market, to segments, to parts, and all this. We have to be very careful. Okay. Dimitris? Of, uh, yes, uh, as I said uh, before, uh, we are uh, facing tricky times, and in tricky times, real estate is something stable. So there is no question that we will have an uh, increase in the real estate. The problem is how big is, will be the angle of the increase, if it will be uh, very fast or it will be slower. In different parts, we will have slower increase, in different parts, uh, higher. Uh, our issue here is how we can connect our product, the product that we are dealing with, that they are areas in distress, with this uh, opportunity that we have right now in the market. Okay. Let's go, for example, to the house sector. Uh, right now, it's, uh, the, the, the development of the new uh, residential is not for the just for housing need, but also for investor appetite. Uh, how does this affect the further development? for a housing project. What is your opinion, Dimitris, about that? Uh, the, the question is whether the, the, the residential uh, property becomes more and more as an investment tool, yeah, as an investment product. Yes, we have seen that uh, starting from back in uh, 2014, uh, when we have the first wave of investors in Greece for Golden Visa, then for, it was uh, uh, some uh, uh, foreign investors. Uh, then it was Airbnb again for investors, and generally we focus on residential, not as a end users to cover our housing needs. Uh, the first year was mainly as an investment product. This continues even the, the last two, three years, but what we can see, say is that the last two years, end users, families that want to cover their needs um, are in, in the market, but once again, the investors are here and they invest to residential properties. And we have new pools of investors, local investors uh, uh, for residential properties mainly. Uh, for instance, uh, it is the, um, uh, the personal banking clientele of the banks, people with uh, 200, 300 uh, thousand euros that want to invest. So we refer to small and medium properties 
but they are here as investors. So, what we are going to, to see the next years, and in contrast to what ha was happened, for instance, before crisis, financial crisis, is that the investors' part will be bigger or quite bigger than before. Um, and um, this may create a new pool of buyers, which is very interesting because it's good to have buyers, but at the same time, we have to be very careful how to cover our housing needs. And uh, given that one third, two thirds of uh, uh, Greek population um, cannot easily acquire property, we have to be also ready for affordable houses. Christophoros, hmm. what's uh, your opinion about that? Well, there's many challenges to, to increase the the capacity of the Greek population to invest in uh, property. First, as you mentioned, is the, their earnings, the Greek economy and so on. Secondly, it's the bureaucratic impediments to transacting on a property, which makes the transactions uh, very slow. And um, in the end, anyone who buys a property goes quite long compared to other markets. So this, uh, these are attractive, let's say, assets to have in your portfolio as an inflation hedge or as a long-term store of wealth, but it's uh, not a very liquid one. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe a disincentive. There's also the, um, the lending, the borrowing capacity of, uh, uh, let's say, the average buyer which has not recovered to, to past levels. And um, I think banks are working on tools to, to enhance this, but this is not widespread yet. So these are key factors that could uh, improve both the liquidity in the market and eventually you know, boost the prices. Mm -hmm. George, you have to... <laughs> Let me put it in another angle. So far, four or five years back, the percentage of ownership in Greece was 74 to 75%. How far can you go with that? You cannot. If 75% owns a house, uh, the residential properties cannot be an investment property. But as all the other things has happened, uh, Greece is like, I don't know, four or five years back, delayed in everything. Uh, it was delayed on that as well. So the last four or five years, what we've seen, we've seen this percentage is getting lower. Uh, we've seen the CBD is, is getting investment properties, residential investment properties, whether it's service apartments, whether it's uh, hotel residences, whatever you name it, uh, student flats. So, um, but a, a huge parameter, a very important parameter in order for this to happen in, in, in is, is exactly what has been discussed by, by my colleagues here, uh, is also the infrastructure. Uh, you cannot stay in Agio Stephanos and you need one hour and a half to be in Athens. If the infrastructure is there, uh, the families, all the, uh, uh, the, the Greek families or the Greek owners can, can move actually slightly out of the strict CBD. CBD can become investment properties as is in all, in all over Europe, and this can be developed slowly. I think what we've seen happening is that picture I just described in the last four or five years. So yes, it's an investment product, investment product. It should be an investment product years back, but okay, here we are, uh, it's happening now. Yeah. So I agree with that. Uh, we have, uh, I agree in general, but we have defined what we are measuring regarding investment residential. If we see what's happening in Europe, for example, or in Germany, okay, you can see this built to rent trend. Major funds will buy blocks of, uh, of apartments, okay, and then they will rent it. This is a different angle that uh, we don't have it in Greece, first of all, because we don't have the mass of such kind of product. Yeah. Secondly, because as very well said in, uh, from the previous speakers, we have uh, around 70% ownership ratio. So this doesn't help for such an investor to come to Greece and uh, provide the same, let's say, investment strategy that they have uh, in, uh, in their country. On the other side, uh, we have seen uh, residential uh, investment small scale, as already said, especially instead of us in Thessaloniki, that someone is buying uh, an apartment or a building uh, managing the asset and uh, rent it to, to potential uh, lessees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I disagree with 
<laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> so uh, what we've seen from the area market, of course, and I know it's, it's a, difficult, a different animal from the pure open market, but still it's the same thing. So what we've seen is that more and more investors, I think Dimitris mentioned it, um, and Stratos are, are looking into the resi. So we have a lot of, of investors from abroad uh, looking into the resi market for what Yanni said, so I don't disagree to the whole um, w of what you said, um, which is uh, build to rent uh, or fix rent and then eventually sell. Uh, so different strategies. And as we said before, there's a lot of money being raised for real estate. It is a stable investment or it has become a main investment when it was an alternative investment for majority of portfolios um, of uh, investors. Uh, so they are looking into putting the money into product. And there's so much core office or core retail you can buy. Uh, so Resi, the pandemic actually, uh, made a shift and it started showing that the Resi is a good product to have because people return to Resi one way or another, either through renting or through, se or through acquisition, um, since they're spending so much time at home. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we've seen a lot also of non-traditional uh, investors from real estate coming to us and asking, uh, you know, what products do you have in the Resi market uh, where we can put some uh, capital? Mm -hmm. So I think it's becoming more and more an investment product Prices, price per square meter in Greece helps mm -hmm. uh, when you're comparing it with other countries. So I think it, it will have, it will continue having potential. If I may add something here, because I agree with uh, uh, Lila, uh, the nature of residential is changing. Uh, it is also working space. It's, uh, so it's a, a bit different. That's why we refer to digital nomads, we refer to silver economy, uh, we refer to uh, small investors, local investors. It's not necessary to be foreign investors because I was referring to uh, personal banking clientele, more than 200 people that are having the money, they want to make an investment and they're willing to invest something more secure. That we have different needs in them, uh, also in the resi area due to uh, 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 demographics. Uh, so what I want to say is that we have different needs, uh, uh, different categories, different investors. So all this make the residential property more attractive in many, uh, for many reasons. Only this. Uh, you think that the, the new development uh, in the residential can be, uh, the area of properties can be close to this new uh, development of uh, residential that we can see that the green building, we have a digitalization, and you think that can be similar, the property that... Uh, if the question is it. whether we can see areas becoming more... Um, more close to the new development, modern. can we compare with uh, all that? Because we see Depends. different projects right now. Depends. I don't think the answer is, is as simple as that, and that has to do with multiple ownership. In building, so as um, you know, if you have a standalone building of, or if you have a detached house somewhere, then there's a lot of things you can do in order to improve and make it closer to the, let's say, current standards. When you're talking about an apartment in an apartment building where you need consent from other owners, um, you can do things on the side. You can definitely upgrade insulation or, or heating, but definitely you cannot change the whole building. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, the current situation, uh, and as, as, as we said before, it, w it remains to be monitored to see how it will evolve, is the fact that the REOs are currently, in a lot of cases, cheaper than the new build, not only because of quality, but because of cost of inflation, cost of material. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, for we see more and more uh, interest from not necessarily only from investors, but also from um, end users who are looking into uh, properties in a specific area, uh, turning either to REOs or to auctions, 
where they can find that property in that area, which is no longer available on the market, because whatever has been available has either, if it's not new, mm -hmm. has either been sold or has an issue or the right. price is not, uh, let's say, market standard. Mm -hmm. Dimitris, uh, you think that uh, we have, uh, there is a, year, uh, a demand in uh, residential properties and uh, the NPLs, connect to real estate uh, portfolios, gradually will overlap this gap. And uh, what do you think? If I understand correctly your question, what I want to say is that, yes, there is demand in the uh, residential areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can see that uh, the figures uh, can show us uh, this. Uh, for instance, there are, uh, uh, let's say, about uh, uh, 1,000 properties in the market for sale, um, uh, 100,000 properties in the market for sale uh, across the country. There is huge demand, and we can say, uh, you can see that it's not that easy for someone to identify the property that he wants or she wants. At the same time, the uh, new build uh, properties are quite expensive finally, and they are getting more expensive now. So for me, the second-hand properties will be very attractive from the own part, and we have a huge pool of properties through the NPL. When I'm saying huge, I'm not, I don't want to say that, okay, we, we have, uh, have heard about, for instance, uh, 801 million properties. No, only part of this will be in the market, and this part can be really give a balance in the market. So for me, it is also, also a great opportunity for NPL managers, asset managers, to uh, handle this pool of properties correctly, to manage this pool of properties correctly in order to cover this need, because there is a need. And now the second-hand properties are more attractive than uh, uh, new builds. Uh, new build um, the cost now, it's really uh, untouchable, uh, because it's easy for the cost to have a raise 20, 30, 40 percent, but the deposits, the income, the disposable income for this kind of investments cannot increase suddenly by 30 percent. So we are going to someone else. What is someone else? Other properties, second hand, and the, the, uh, the pool of properties in the NPL uh, portfolios can serve this need. Just it requires, let's say, more sophisticated uh, management approaches. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move to another sector. What about technology and the effect in real estate? I would like to ask Christophoros to elaborate on the technology needs for fast-growing Greek REO market and the difficulties of maturing REO assets. So, technology, the holy grail. <laughs> um, basically, everyone is thinking about technology because of the volume. Uh, Dimitri just mentioned that uh, REOs coming to mar market will be significant. We estimate even for the next 12 months between the, the, the large servicers, I don't know, minimum 10,000 REOs and a lot more uh, probably being onboarded. Just the process of onboarding is uh, quite heavy. Then you have the, the maturity process that I will touch upon in a minute. And then you have the, the liquidation. To be able to, in a market where the, the, the previous ecosystem was not designed to handle such an increase in volumes. You mentioned 100,000 properties on sale today and we're talking about adding 10, 20, potentially more percent to this market uh, in one year. Um, you need to build up uh, technology tombs. This will uh, create an industrialized approach. In uh, dealing with the problems, it will allow you, if you have created networks of alliances with engineers, with lawyers, with notaries, with uh, valuers and so on, to deal with the oncom oncoming volume. The, um, one of the speakers before mentioned you know, the, the old uh, manual approach to, to dealing with uh, real estate problems and challenges on the loans and so on, throwing people at the NPL solutions. It's the same here. You need standardized approach, you need discipline, you need to bring in um, 
uh, an overall asset management approach to it. And this can only come when you're dealing with a big volume along with the right technological tools. And when I'm saying technology, it involves uh, also decision-making tools, which obviously may not take the decision, but they assist an asset manager to handle 300 REOs instead of 50 REOs or whatever the magic numbers are, or possibly 1,000 REOs instead of 100 REOs. These are the, for me, the, uh, on the asset management side, this is a very important thing. The other problem with uh, technology and so on is data. And um, we've been discussing this for years now. Greek uh, property data is not very clean. It's not uh, remediated. The information is not standardized and it's not always online easily approachable with open sources. The situation getting better right now or? Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, E-auctions is, is some uh, progress, but we are far from it. So you also need technological tools that can help you digest whatever data you have, try and standardize it, maybe not 100% as uh, we would like to, but 20%, 50%, and so on, in order to be able to make these better decisions that could come in the asset management phase. And this is also a key part of the technology challenge here. And um, it needs a lot of investment. One of, my, one of our uh, speakers before mentioned uh, some things about it. Uh, we, as Resolute, have created a, now a, a subsidiary company called Recognite. Someone, uh, one of my colleagues will come later to, to present our products. And we've been investing very, very heavily on this side all over Europe. Mm -hmm. But uh, Greece has been very challenging. Dimitris, you think the lack of uniformity. You can like to add something? Yeah. First of all, I, I believe that um, uh, we have invested as, as a sector, but uh, also as a company, uh, in gathering information. Yes, if you invest in this, we can gather information, we can have the data uh, needed in order to make uh, uh, better decision making. So the last years, we have seen a great evolution to that. Uh, but what I want just to point here is that every time we discuss what's happening with uh, the data, what the companies are doing, uh, the services, the banks or whatever, something that we need to mention is that we can speed up, we have uh, make a calculation about that, at least four times the whole time needed for, uh, let's say, full time to, 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 to clean up a property, we can speed up by four times if the public sector and the authorities make the necessary steps for digital transformation. We have seen the last years, even to this, some progress, but there is room for uh, uh, progress. And if also uh, the public sector support this, and uh, as I said, we have seen signs to this direction, we can make really miracles in the next one, two years. So it is a combination of private companies to invest more and more in data collection and, and all these and systems and of also the public sector to support us to this. Just to give an idea, only the TAP, TAP is the, 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 the municipality, mm -hmm. uh, let's say tax uh, for the property. Uh, and now it is outside of the cycle of the uh, commercialization of, of the property. You can sell the property without necessarily to have, uh, let's say, the, the certification that everything is okay with the TAP. Only this can speed up the process by at least three months. Only this. And it was just a decision. Just to give you an idea how we can, because we discuss about digitalization, digital transformation, because we want to speed up the whole process. And there are simple steps that can be done, not necessarily every time from the private sector, but also from the public sector, they can speed up the whole process. And there are pro uh, proposals on this, on this side, that can be done, please believe me, in three months. Now it is more than six, even nine months. In some cases, 12 months in order to clean up a, an easy property. Not a very something peculiar, an easy property. So steps can be done. I believe that 
even the, the, the public sector is on the, on the right track at this moment, so we have to speed up this and uh, generally the whole situation can be much, much better in one, uh, two years. Lila, you agree? Definitely, uh, and I, I agree with Dimitris. It's a combination of, of uh, public and uh, private uh, effort, let's say. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, we have, um, I think, a unique system in Greece of how, for example, properties are legalized, which is taking a long period of time. Uh, things that will be done, so electronic um, ID in properties will definitely help five years down the road. So when majority of properties have property ID, then things will be simpler. Right now, though, there is a lot of effort to be done in order to get those, which has been passed to the private sector um, and to the owners, pretty much, that they're looking to sell, whether those are investors, um, you know, servicers or owners of portfolios or um, uh, simple individuals. Um, so, uh, there is things that will be done, uh, te technology definitely helps, uh, it helps you understand the portfolio, especially in portfolios and large uh, bulks, uh, helps you understand properties, helps you, um, you know, put your flows in order so you know what needs to be done, which is impossible to do it manually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think we have a way to go um, in order for things to be simple. Now, we must mention here that there are things that were done, even, I mean, speaking for Ariosa, there were things that were done uh, that helped the situation is also from a legal um, and, and, um, and getting technically um, uh, legalized uh, properties, but still there's things mm -hmm. to be done. Yanis, what do you think about this technology boom that we're going to see in the next years? First of all, we are seeing the technology boom already. Okay? All uh, the major companies are investing in technology. I agree with Dimitris totally because uh, this could be this in, everyone has to be in the same step. The public sector has to apply also digital, the so-called and uh, so much wanted uh, digitalization in every step of uh, of the real estate and uh, of the authorities, the public authorities, for example, uh, it is much easier to to create to, to have a building permit in uh, electronically. Okay. It's very easy. You not need six months okay, to, to to have a building permit in place. You have it in one month. That will create a lot of, of uh, new developments easier than uh, they are doing now. And also, technology will help foreign investors who are coming in the market who are familiar with uh, these tools and can more easily make the decision to, to invest, uh, to invest uh, in the country. George, you uh, definitely you. agree with all that. Uh, this discussion about um, uh, difficulties uh, with uh, legalities, technicalities regarding a, a property has been here for the last 15-20 uh, years plus. Um, I'm not going to say to that because I think um, uh, the panel has more or less covered the subject. I'm going to say that uh, is amazing the steps that has been done the last years mm -hmm. uh, through this uh, digitalization. Uh, we've seen uh, platforms in the market where today we can see how much um, a property is consuming. We see uh, other frequencies, for example, cleaning, uh, the energy factor, stuff like that. So it's amazing uh, how all these IoTs is, is, um, is, is developing. Uh, we're very lucky to have servicers uh, around. Uh, they saw the way, they saw how this has been done, and we're very, very lucky to uh, all of us work uh, with these people. I think uh, they, they are made uh, some um, really quick steps forward. Uh, having said that, uh, at the same time, I think this, um, uh, this entrance of uh, international players um, either uh, has to do with uh, family offices, real estate investment trusts or other companies, uh, has given us another element, uh, which is uh, transparency. It was something really, really hard to see the, for the past years. Uh, currently, we have a lot of data. I'm, I'm again on the data side. I uh, have a lot of information, a lot of data available. We currently can see um, real sales price, real leasing price, and there is, it's, it's an amazing um, help in every kind of either valuation or, or whatever um, person is dealing with that. Uh, and last but not least, seeing all this happening with all this pandemic crisis, this is the, the, the third thing. Uh, I think that uh, what I mean about the pandemic crisis, I mean the, uh, the fact that a lot of people working from, from home, uh, you can be here, work in London, get me in London, work uh, in, in other countries. So all these things, I, I think in, in my mind, 
has really moved the idea that we had so far the last years that uh, when you speak about properties, location, location, location into data, data, data. I think is, is, is a very good title. Uh, what has happened the last years? Okay. Dimitris, uh, what do you think about the technology in the... I would like to make a differentiation. We have technology is helping the handling of the real estate. It's not helping the data collection. The data collection and the maturity of uh, uh, procedure is 75 or more manually. No matter what the public sector will do, that won't change or will take decades. So, yes, technology is helping by 100% the handling of the assets and the handling of the data, but the data collection and the maturity procedure is 75 to 80% manually. This is how this is uh, that we must see how we combine these things mm -hmm. in order to make it quicker and that will help also as clearer uh, uh, picture we have of each asset even as a distress or as REO so quicker will go to the market. So mm. don't focus only to the closing procedure like TAP or, or all this stuff but let's focus to the major part that is the maturity part mm. in order to go to the final. Um, based on your experience, what is the, uh, how, uh, what is the time uh, maturity for REO and how can be improved uh, in uh, your opinion? The maturity time of REO is uh, approximately 12 to 15 months. No matter, uh, we are trying to put uh, targets of six months, eight months, but it cannot be less than 12 to 15 months. And uh, I'm speaking from the time that it uh, goes uh, to a public auction. The public auction is making it an REO until it can go again as a mature asset with all the certificates and all the pedigrees mm. <laughs> outside for sale again in a private auction. So, first, you agree with uh, this uh, time frame? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Can I, you? Yeah. Um, depends. <laughs> depends. And by Your depends, favorite. I mean the, the, the following. What we've, we're trying into value, uh, I'm not saying that there aren't assets that need that time or even more, but what we have um, initiated into value is trying and do to the extent possible uh, due to the lack of information, um, an initial assessment of uh, how long uh, or what is the probable uh, maturity time for an asset. Uh, meaning that we're trying from experience, that's why I said it's not data driven this, uh, to understand if we expect to have issues with, um, you know, consents, uh, high legal spaces and all that stuff. So. We, we are all trying to become more smart and I think also on the investor side or on the private side and that's a, a service that a lot of the, my esteemed colleagues here can, can offer to the public is trying and do an initial pre-screening and see what is, is required. Mm -hmm. So we started seeing that um, assets that have been obtained with you know, with this approach can mature in eight, 10 months and get to the market. And we're actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's not theoretical. Of course, you will always have, um, you know, uh, surprises, things that are not as expected uh, that will uh, delay the process. So I think it's also the work you do before acquiring an asset that will definitely play a role as to how long an asset needs to be matured on an REO. Mm -hmm. No, not so if, I may, uh, if I may add something here, because Dimitri, I a bit disagree about uh, technology. I believe that technology, and not only technology, but as a wider, uh, let's say, uh, concept, technology and decision making uh, in the workflow can support a lot all of this. Because for me, it is uh, really unacceptable that I have to spend weeks in order to have an appointment with the urban authority to get a paper. This paper can be, re can, can be acquired digitally, easily. This is what I'm saying. So having done this, if the whole, let's say, file, the, uh, the building permits and all, all that can be acquired easily and digitally, can save a lot of time, a lot of effort, and because now it is not 
irrational delays. Two months in order to go to one authority, another two months to go to the other authority. That's why I believe that only uh, a simplification, digital transformation and technology can give us the transparency, the quality that we need and the speed that we need. And finally, all this to be in a logical and a rational cost base, because now everybody needs to work in an unrational, irrational, completely irrational cost basis. From the NPL services to the uh, real estate providers, that's why we need to invest in this. And I believe that we can speed up the whole process and make our life easier and the product much, much better and transparent. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion. Uh, okay. Lila, uh, are the data for assets going to the public uh, auction enough for secure bidders? And uh, how can this improve? Because we were here uh, earlier in the morning about the bug with uh, many surprises when you take uh, a lot of properties in the public auctions. I think public auctions have improved a lot, actually, so from when it started. Um, the auction helps in terms of uh, anonymity and in terms of doing this digitally so you don't have to be somewhere and be seen and, uh, you know, have all the instances that we knew from the past. Uh, we've started uh, since this year all new confiscations. We'll have to have in the auction uh, the valuation, any documents, photos. Uh, the new laws allow, that was instigated in 2020, that was voted, allows to legalize assets which have high legality, something that is not allowed in the open market, so category five for those of you who know it. Um, so things are done and they're bringing the auctions as more transparent and also easier to the public. Once we have also the, uh, the two services that uh, I think make a lot of sense to be offered to the public and that is pre-screening and also from, uh, from the day, so somebody who is buying an asset uh, knows that he has the support uh, of the, either the company that introduced that asset or, um, you know, of a team that he can go and get somebody to do all the process from uh, uh, the day of the auction until you have the whole folder or the whole file of the asset, then I think we'll start seeing a lot, a lot, a lot more people buying from auctions. The banks have realized that, so now they are talking, we have two banks that are talking to put in the market a product of financing for auctions, which up until now was only um, with own equity. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see gradually that the number, and of course the servicers are also realizing that and uh, are promoting actively the assets in the market, uh, make it more, no, uh, more, more uh, um, you know, apparent for the public to find and going back to what we were saying is, um, you know, I want an asset in this specific location. Uh, that's a good pool of uh, research or that's a good research that I can do in order to find that asset. Um, that's why we've seen in the last, uh, since May, since uh, auction started, we've start, started seeing an increase in the success rate to third parties uh, in the auctions. Mm -hmm. Dimitris, what uh, your opinion about that? As clearer and as more data we have during a public auction, more attractive it will be. Right now, uh, public auctions, the majority of them is a black box. If somebody comes to my office and asks me, I want you to tell me your opinion if it's okay to give him my approval to buy a property from you, I have all the data and I can say, yes, you can go on or you must do this, this, this actions and it will cost you this. If they ask me about the public auction, 90% I cannot give an answer. Okay. I don't have the data to give an answer. So we must find a way to improve that part, mm. to make it as clear as possible what they are buying and what will be the difficulties that they will face. Now we have gone from a black box to a big gray box, but we want a transparency. Mm -hmm. Only like that. But I think the experience of the engineers can help in that because, okay, definitely there are complicated assets, but the majority of the assets uh, which come from residential portfolios and which come from mortgage portfolios in the market, you know, uh, you can 
assume, and I didn't say, you know, you can sign it with, uh, you, with your blood on the paper, but you can safely assume the situation. So, yes, Dimitris is right, you definitely don't know, but I think that's where the experience of, of uh, the teams come in, in order to be able to show, um, you know, which direction at least this property goes. Mm -hmm. when, we, sorry, when we are interfering in the whole procedure, is right after the auction. We are not interfering as in, uh, technical uh, due diligence before the auction. So, this is what must change. Uh, okay, the, the main issue is that you can inspect the asset, but you have to the, the differentiate between the asset class again, because if you have a resi, okay, you go to buy a resi in an area, the third floor apartment in Marusi. Okay, how wrong can you get, okay, regarding the pricing? Okay, what, ex, what surprises will you see in this apartment? Okay, and the majority also of the successful e auctions have shown that, especially in the apartments, there aren't so many damages as they expected to have in the past. Mm -hmm. I agree, though, for more complicated assets like hotels, for example, or like office buildings, there, there, is a, there is a big issue that you cannot inspect the asset. You have the, the data required to make your, uh, your uh, due diligence. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with uh, Yanis. Uh, and uh, if I may give some uh, statistics, it's about three, uh, maximum 4% to make all the necessary remediation actions, 3% of the value of the property to make all the necessary remediation actions for the property. And if now with the new law, the, uh, the, the next, uh, let's say, the second auction is, goes to 80% of, uh, of the property. I can tell you that, that with this 20%, we can buy anything. Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay. Everything can be covered with this 20%. Please okay. believe me. <laughs> According to statistics, maximum from three with extra works to be done, maximum 10%. So, according to the statistics, of course, every property has its day, but uh, the average is about 3 to 10 percent. So, mm -hmm. for me, it's, a, it's quite safe. Mm -hmm. You think it's now the opportunity for uh, collaterals uh, of recapitalization of NPLs to be checked with the same uh, procedure uh, of the collaterals of new loans? You think? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a, a new law that uh, we check on the new, the new collaterals for the new loans. You think you can uh, use the same procedure uh, for uh, recapitalization of NPLs? What do you think, Dimitri? I think right now is the opportunity for uh, the real estate market to get clear. Uh, services have under their management uh, hundreds and thousands of assets. 80% of uh, them will recapitalize and maybe more or less, and the other 20% will go to public auctions. The ones that they will be recapitalized, what we are suggest, and they will be sold again as a green loan, either to a bank or to uh, other uh, financial institutions, that we have a lack there because it's not so clear, as former speakers said to other panels, it's, a, it's an opportunity right now to check the collaterals, either the ones that we had from before or the ones that they have taken do, during the recapitalization project, process, the same way like the banks are checking now uh, the collaterals to give a new loan in order to collect all the data, legalize the property and have a, a, a totally clean uh, view and a, a clear property that can be sold mm -hmm. anytime, either from uh, the bank, either from uh, the individual that owned it. Probably the people here will say to me, this has a, a big cost. Okay. Our, uh, our uh, suggestion is this cost, put it on the recapitalization. If I'm making a recapitalization of 1 million in 700, to put another 50,000 in order to make the product clear, I don't think the um, or the uh, borrower will disagree with that. And We're forgetting that we don't own the assets. They are on the borrowers. So that would be a great idea. Cost, cost aside, uh, the fact that borrowers are willing to um, uh, 
uh, turn their loan or do a restructuring their loan does not necessarily mean that they allow you to visit their asset. So, um, you know, it would be great, but I don't think that's possible on all the collaterals. Plus, we're forgetting the number of collaterals we're having. So we're talking about thousands of collaterals the value of 250,000 uh, properties. Uh, you know, that's not possible even if we start today and we put all of the market into the um, works of doing that mm -hmm. will take us years and years to do it. So that's why I think it's, it's a, it would be a great idea, but if we're talking different volumes and different situation. Regarding the borrowers, the borrowers are willing to cooperate because they are recapitalized. So it's the opportunity. They are giving all the data that you need. They are not unwilling like in the procedure that we are going in a, a public auction. It's totally different. Anyway. Uh, so, I really thank you all for all this uh, conversation. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll wait a minute. One minute. We we heard from uh, your initial uh, discussion that. Uh, uh, asset prices have uh, sort of some way to go and maybe be on the verge of coming back again. But do you think, given the uh, backlog or the uh, s significant number of assets that need to be somehow exchanged or uh, renew ownership over uh, uh, the MPL uh, spectrum, uh, do you think the price levels are okay at this level? Do you think it's going to go down? How, how is this going to work? Do you feel that these are clearance levels, as you would expect from NPLs? Uh, and number two is, um, do you think the costs of the notary costs for larger assets are justified? And if there's something that can be done about that? I think about... No. Um, let's remember that since 2009, before the financial crisis, we are 22% below these price levels. I don't know if this says something or nothing. Um, as I said, we have a lot of things in front of us. Uh, they look scary, they might not. Uh, everyone said that real estate, is a property market, is around six months uh, backwards, so we need to see what is going to happen. Personally, um, I, I would say that we might see, as Dimitri said and I agree, something like less volumes, probably because the first semester was quite strong, it's continued to be. Uh, we're not going to see negative prices this year, but I think uh, if other things being equal and there is no um, uh, strange circumstances or uh, um, uh, problems that we all afraid, that the market, yes, there is still uh, there is still time to grow. But there is a lot of, I think at this time for the last 10 years, we have the most uh, unknown factor X in our equation. That's what I feel. Uh, removing all the external influences. So everything we discussed, inflation, war, high prices, epidemics. So if you, we remove all that and we're in a very stable environment, <laughs> and the question is, would the amount of assets that will reach the market due to the MPL management will affect the prices? I think the answer is probably no or no. There, and the reason is one, it doesn't come, and that's the services and the investors are looking at, at that. It doesn't help anybody um, float in the market with a lot of properties and dropping prices, because also we don't want the prices to drop. And two, the REO man, uh, market, uh, which is all the, 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 the properties that will be acquired by the, uh, through the services by the investors in the various portfolios, will take time to reach the market and will be done gradually. So the fact that there might be, you know, um, 5,000 new acquisitions in special purpose vehicles this year doesn't mean that 5,000 properties are getting to the market today. So I don't think the prices um, are going to be, uh, to be affected or are going to go down 
through the auctions. In any case, in auctions, what we have seen is if a property has a, um, uh, you know, a very uh, appealing market, appealing value, so lower value, the market tends to correct it. So we see that more people are participating and then the property ends up at the market value it should have. So I think we should have more faith in the market in terms of where the prices should be, as well as the services and the investors in, in, in getting the right amount of properties in the market in the first place. Mm -hmm. I want to add something here. The last five years, we have more or less, we don't have official data, so it's some estimations. So please uh, forgive me if I have, uh, finally I'm not that accurate. But, uh, Dimitris, uh, the last five years, we have more or less the same transactions, like one year before crisis, like 2007. All the five, the final, the last five years, we have more or less the same volume, which is around 110, 120 thousand uh, transactions, real transactions, no transactions from father to, 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 to child, all that, real transactions. So uh, if this is more or less correct, correct, it means that we have a lot of demand in front of us. And it was before crisis where mainly the market was denominated by the locals. Now we have different pools of, let's say, foreign investors. Uh, as I said, we have, and we start again having, let's say, from Golden Visa, okay, it's lower, but we have Golden Visa, we have foreign investors, institutional or private investors, we have uh, the, the Italian people from uh, the, the three, third age from the, the, the north that they want to come here. A study says that about 200,000 transactions can be done in the next 15 years, so more or less 15, 20,000 per year uh, in, only in Greece. We have the 2,100 uh, potential uh, medium, small and medium investors from personal banking. We have, of course, the recovery of the economy and the need for new housing. So we have, diff uh, we have the digital nomads and we have much better environment for transactions. We have better infrastructure. We have uh, 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 the second home uh, market that can, uh, sorry, holiday homes market that can really uh, B is very attractive. We are much cheaper than Spain, than Mediterranean line, Spain, uh, France, uh, Italy. So we have a different mix of investors or buyers, much bigger than before. And we have only one, only one, uh, let's say, uh, year. The last five years was equal to only one year uh, as in the past. So generally, the prospects are really positive. Of course, we have all these events. The, uh, the COVID effect was almost nothing. V curve, one year okay, frozen market the next year, but the prices went up. So as I said before, for me, the price level will continue to be higher. About the volumes will be okay, a discussion if we see all these volumes. But if we have, if we have let's say, uh, come back to normality, uh, if the work is over and blah, blah, blah. I believe that generally the prospects are really positive for next years. And I do agree with uh, Lila. And as I said before, the pool of NPLs may be, because we have really big demand, at least recently, till recently, big demand. Uh, this pool can be the, 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 the reason to have equilibrium and to have a better manage of this demand. Do you have any other questions? Not there was a second question about the cost of notaries for bigger assets. <laughs> That's a question for a notary. I don't want to say anything <laughs> in order not to have a strike. In order not to have a strike from the notary. <laughs> okay. I really thank you, all of us and all of you, and uh, we're ready to go for uh, the lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Notaries.